Welcome to another episode of Think Development Out Loud. Today we have Dr. Sonia Garson Ramirez, who is a Marie Curie Fellow in the Department of International Politics at the University of Aberystwyth. She's also a visiting fellow with WICKED. Sonia has a PhD in Comparative Gender Studies, and her research area includes intersections between feminist theory, transitional justice, peace building, and critical race theory. Her current research focuses on societies in the global south, and today she will be talking to us about some of the fieldwork she has conducted in Colombia. Thank you, and welcome, Sonia. Thank you, Musayan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, um, my current research, as you say, is related to peace building. And within this wide window, I'm especially investigating resistance to the Colombian peace agreement that was signed in 2016 between the government of Juan Manuel Santos and the FARC guerrilla. In this project, project I look at, at how structural inequalities or forms of subordination as for instance, gender, class, ethnicity, and some other power differentials at geographical location are involved in the formation of movements of resistance that had engaged uh, in forms of opposition to the signature of the peace agreement and to the implementation of this, of this peace accord. Um, this Colombian peace agreement is still ongoing. And even so, it is not new for a peace agreement to face opposition what this peace agreement has shown is that even if a peace agreement involves numerous uh, measures aimed at tackle the roots of the conflict and to transform the lives of the victims, it still can be rejected by the very same population that is meant to benefit from it. The peace process is still ongoing and that's why the research questions I'm trying to answer is how peace building institutions can implement a peace agreement that has been rejected and how these peace institutions can uh, expand the target of their actions so as to involve people of these groups of population that had opposed the peace agreement. And this research is a work, uh, work in progress. It is based on ethnographic methods, including participant observations and fieldwork interviews in two kinds of institutions. They are the Commission of Clarification and the Centers of Memory. This Commission of Clarification is also known as the, as the True Commission. And I look at how gender works in the practices and discourses of these institutions. And along with that, I look at how gender overlaps with other senses of difference in the work of these peace institutions. In Colombia, gender overlaps, overlaps strongly with uh, differential, differentials as for instance, class inequality, the relation of class and ethnicity, and with geographical belonging. And because of patriarchy, gender also shapes the experiences of conflict through which persons uh, and individuals have become a victim. It means, for instance, that the experience of a woman victim of kidnapping, her expectations of reparation and obtaining justice and her notions of forgiveness might differ from the notions of a lesbian woman victim of forced displacement, even in spite of having, victim, having been victims of the same um, armed actors. I'm drawing of a, on a gender approach called intersectionality, uh, which was initially developed in critical race theory by feminist law scholar Kimberly Crenshaw, 
And one of the particularities of intersectionalities is that it underlines a certain rigidity in law and in institutions, which is the tendency to classify people in mutually exclusive or narrow categories. For instance, some institutions can presume that a single methodology will work to explain the experience of a black, uh, black population. But in doing so, they might not recognize the diversity of experience amongst this group. I had followed the work of the Clarification Commission, and I think they had made a great job uh, in creating spaces in which victims can meet with the perpetrators. And I think they, this is a very extraordinary work and it uh, contributes a lot to the process of reconciliation. But nevertheless, uh, when I had made preliminary interviews with um, people working with these institutions, they had told me that sometimes they had the feeling of having working with the same population, with the same group of participants. So, and this is one of the challenges that I had also experimented when I had my field work, because most of the times, the first persons you meet are the leaders of grassroots organizations and those who have the chance of being more visible in the work of these, uh, of these organizations. But uh, it takes a lot for you to meet um, ordinary people who perhaps are still experiencing violence and subordination on the ground. But with the time, I had discovered that being um, participating in, for instance, peace rallies, in demonstrations organized by grassroots organizations, and having spontaneous conversations with the participants, then you have the opportunity to create certain um, or to engage with uh, those people who are involved with those organizations on the ground. And they had a lot of knowledge and they can tell you how the violence of the conflict continue in their ordinary lives. They might be, for instance, black women leaders in a group of Afro-Colombian leaders or as guerrilla women who were forcibly recruited and who still struggle to be recognized as victims. Another challenge that I had faced it's also a sense of responsibility with the interviewees because they are giving you their time and they are telling you your, and their stories. And this is a very personal investment. I had the feeling that they want to contribute in, so, in their own way to bring about change. So I think that there is a form of ethical contract that emerged between the interviewee and the researcher. And that so we had the responsibility of, try, um, of trying to reflect their experience in our own work and to participate to make the divorces heard. But what the Colombian peace process has shown is that even if a peace agreement involved numerous measures they made a tackle the roots of the conflict and to transform the lives of the people, they can still engage in, in um, at, at, uh, acts of resistance because they don't feel that their experience is recognized and they don't have the opportunity to get reparation and access to justice. Thank you very much, Sonia. Thank you.